How's it going, everyone? This is Wimbo. Today we are going to have another quick Blender tutorials, talking about lighting for cosmetic products. Well, the common issues when you photographing cosmetic products, usually the cosmetic products, the packaging is, can be pretty glossy and it's very smooth. Either it's plastic, cheap plastic, or some fancy uh, metal coated materials for that. So for this actually example, we are you having some materials similar like that, but we have three different look and, and three different lighting environment to really creating the the, uh, the images that you really want to render. So this is the first look, and uh, let's do another one. So this is a pure white background look, and then we have another like a black, a little bit dramatic type of feeling look. So. I will start breaking down in each individual one and explain how I accomplish this particular look and uh, actually make a render looks much better and professional. So if I'm kind of zooming into the render this part, as you can see the the actual bottle cap here is kind of like a uh, is a mix of of some gold materials for uh, for metals very smooth and also some kind of like uh, a pretty rough bumpness on, on the between. So when you actually taking pictures of this type of uh, products and in studio wise, you don't use a, a default lighting or pure white soft box. Uh, what I mean is that if I'm actually going to have a shift A to have you utilizing the light and the area light, when I scale up and turn around the area light, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just temporarily check off the lights over here. So grabbing this big area light over here and setting up as a, let's say 5,000, maybe over Q, let's just do 1,000 and see. Yeah. And we can scale it down or do things and then we can change even uh, change the way how we trying to want trying to position positioning it and right now it seems like a little bit overexposed let's do 500 well it's it's still fairly close you know the the problem or the issues I'm uh, running into that the reason that this right now this light doesn't look pleasing is because this is a harsh transitioning very big white block uh, well, for me, it's not acceptable, and there's, I just feels like it's not a really professional lid. You can adding more light to it, Shift D, to to actually return that to giving that. But that look, you see that the harsh light, and uh, doesn't matter how big this thing can be, it's still gonna be a straight line, very very defined. So it's not really gonna make your render looks a little bit pleasing or high end is more than that. So what we're trying to do here, uh, I want to show you my light is not really typically default light or area light. I don't use spot or even sun, all these type of settings. I just gonna uh, creating my own light materials. I'm gonna delete these, hit X, select that, hit X, and I'm gonna turn on my light. As you can see here, since we're in the render view, and you will see underneath here, there's a big gradient going on here. What this actually, why we need to use this gradient? Simply because the because this surface is very reflective and smooth, it's going to reflecting the light around it. So if I'm selecting the left on a right uh, light on the left, if I'm dragging around, you can see that the highlight and the bar actually can can move around. So it's actually reflecting the light. So this is the edge of this light right here and actually generally gradually transitioning to the highlight. And then a very contrasted light turned to the black is good because the background is white. And for this part, I'm using, I'm using another light and it's great, gradually transitioning from the dark side and the, to the highlight because we're using this as a rim light as well. So for technically, this looks more much pleasing and uh, more professional speaking with lighting. And because this this particular product is is not 
the entire body is not really uh, that smooth and is not really made by metal. It's kind of like a little bit matte of uh, glass or type of materials in the plastic. So it's, it's look, having this kind of gradients going on here is actually looks very nice and, and the, getting the shapes coming out it really enhance this three dimension. And, uh, and with this background drop, they usually uh, people know how to do this. And uh, uh, just, you can just go into adding a shift A to adding a mesh at the plane and scale it up, right? And then you're just going to select the other end and hit E to extrude and the Z axis to come up. And then you come back over here, select edge, select, press 2 and select this edge and control B to bevel. That's how usually you do a backdrop. The common issues I'm seeing in here is, is they're not wide enough. You know, people think, well, why do you need this wide? It doesn't really make any sense. Well, if you really zoom in, look closely on the edge, if I'm actually going to shrink this uh, backdrop down along X axis, if, it, if I hit this S, X, and scale it down, watch on the edge. So you slowly you will see something on on this side it is actually turning to uh, pure black. Was well, simply because this area of this environment is there's no content or no anything is reflecting this area into this uh, very like smooth super smooth cylinder out here. So the surface actually re responding what the environment talking about so this is very important when you watch making sure that your environment is covering the the areas that you don't want to miss so if I'm dragging this up it's much better so you see it's actually covering up some re reflections going on so you see it's, you can see that changes on the tiny bit details but these details really make a difference when you doing a uh, beautiful transitioning on, on especially very super smooth uh, surface because when we're working in th inside a blender in 3d everything can be perfect you can dial the textures to the exact way you want and uh, this is the challenge we need to fix it so if it's super reflective it's gonna see everything around it so this is the first look, as you can see, very simple. And the, another common issue is people overlight the scene. So this is just a backdrop and the, making sure you have a front light and a, a backlight is working like the edge to showing a, a dimensions, you know, showing the highlight uh, shadow and slowly go back to another highlight. So this is kind of really nice way to, uh, to light the environment. Okay, so this is the uh, light setup number one. I'm gonna do another one. Uh, number two, which is like the pure white background. Okay, so this is more like a e-commerce type of look. So you can see here in the background, it's, it's usually just a big, big chunk of white uh, light. So what is this material? Is I call it even light. It's just a, it's just a material with a. Uh, emission shader and I can change that uh, the strong uh, strength actually to 10 whatever it's just gonna bump in more details into the bottle uh, if you if you prefer so I think five is is okay and uh, another thing these two lights are just going to be the same lighting setup from the previous set, uh, light it's just working for a label and also to getting this gradients for part of the logo come in and this is the other one it's kind of reflecting uh, the other rim over here so and one thing you need to pay attention this is how things work as you can if you notice in the final picture render this is, looks as white but apparently on our actual floor is is actually it's a black well what is this black is about is it's a very specular uh, zero roughness uh, floor right here and the color is black so when you actually taking pictures in the real studio in photography of a product you will purchase black acrylic to to do this type of a surface and do uh, and because we're right now we're using 90 degrees so the light come here is 
everything you see on this surface is basically is not about this surface. It's super smooth. It's reflecting the background right here. What we have in the background? Well, it's a pure white background. So it using utilizing this plane as a white light. Same time, it's also become a perfectly blending background over right here. Uh, so you can you can see this trick is really helpful if you want to see less or a little bit more blurry in the, in here on the reflections. What you're supposed to change is you actually need to change the texture of the surface, nothing else. See the magic? So after select the floor, and then I just gonna dial this uh, roughness up a little bit. You can see it's become a little bit blurry, and I kind of like this look or it depends on how much you want to see and you can just change that this is just such a such a wonderful thing that you can work inside 3d when you're working with product render uh, this is such a what lovely thing then that if you in the in the working with the inside of a real photography studio you need to change in different materials you need to wipe it down making sure there's no dust man inside of 3d dust free Okay, so the next thing we are going to see here is the lighting setup of number three. As you can see here, this looks very similar to the lighting setup for pure white background. Well, the only difference is, is here, I just put a black a flag in, the, in here. So the reason I call it a flag is the photography flag is uh, something pure, white, uh, pure black to try to cutting off the light. So what I'm trying to utilize in this is to, to make this as a uh, part of the, the view. So you it literally you can see this is what's the, this plane with the flags at. So you have G to X, I we can positioning that. It's barely just uh, barely touch to the in the frame. So I just making sure this thing is in, inside the frame. What's happening here? Uh, one thing you need to pay attention is the position of this flag. You don't want to make it too big because if I make it too big, what's it gonna happen? It's gonna block the light, you know? So we don't want to do that. So we're just gonna utilizing the background uh, and we can even cut off this light. If you really don't want a room light from there, we can even close it. And as you can see here, if I'm really getting this thing too big, it's cutting off the light from the behind. So I just want to barely, I still want to see the highlight in here coming from the background. So it looks pretty cool. And also at the front, because I'm using a gradient uh, light as actually making the, the transition looks very nice and looks just looks much better than the pure uh, default light. And and also for this light, uh, for this texture, I have a gradient texture. Basically, that's what it looks like. If you can creating some textures inside of Photoshop, creating a gradient, you can just load it up in here. Nothing fancy, it's just a regular, if I cut this thing off, this has become a regular plain white uh, light. This is something I don't want to use and and right now although it's showing on a node is working just like the, our default area light. So that's why I don't want to use it. So having these loading in a image texture and uh, with a map and also a color ramp so you can actually changing the position of it and you can change the gradient of this. So it looks very nice and beautiful. Look at here. It's just lovely, you know. So, so this is kind of something you can definitely create it yourself. If not, if you don't want to spend time to recreating this, well, you can either purchase this file, working blender of whole files. I'm gonna including all three lighting setup, and also this cosmetic product uh, as a model. And uh, for for your purchase, you can purchase that in the Gumroad or you can become my Patreon to getting this uh, tutorial file for, uh, for part of the contribution you can, you can access to that. So either way, um, that's pretty much covering everything I wanna talk about in this tutorials. Hopefully it's very helpful and I want to keep everything easy and short and at the same time very, trying to be helpful. And uh, if you really want to learn more about 
a photorealistic product product rendering like these, you can certainly check out my Blender 3.0 Masterclass coming up at the end of this month. It's in the pre-order. Right now, you can actually get $49 off if you're ordering now today using the discount code I provided. And uh, yeah, well, without further ado, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.